my great pleasure to introduce Charlie from NYU. Uh, he will talk about uh, classifying sufficiently connected positive scalar curvature manifolds in dimension four and five. <laughs> okay, uh, I want to thank Guilin and the uh, other organizers for the uh, for the kind invitation. And um, it's um, um, so so today's talk is about a uh, joint is. It's about a joint work with uh, Otis Chodosh and also with uh, Yevgeny Lyukumovich. So I'm not entirely sure about the backgrounds of the, all the audience in uh, in non-commutative geometry seminar. Uh, and in fact, uh, I myself do not do not know pretty much anything in uh, non-commutative geometry. Um, I, I see that as a students. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, I, I I will try to. Uh, uh, you know, highlight the uh, geometric ideas and, um, and and essentially skip all the analysis behind it. Okay, so let's uh, let's start. So the main topic today is uh, is is the so-called scalar curvature. So this is a weak curvature invariant when can attach pointwise to a Riemannian uh, manifold of any dimension, and uh, its its value. Uh, you know, it's a it's a, then a smooth function for smooth Riemannian manifold, and and its point value can be Pointwise value can be interpreted uh, in several equivalent ways. So the, these first two ways are essentially def definitions. So it's either the trace of Ricci or the full trace of second uh, sectional curvature. Um, and a uh, more geometric uh, interpretation is, is that the scalar curvature determines the volume of, um, of a small geodesic pose. Um, uh, so uh, in, in fact, the, these, uh, there's this nice um, formula um, Namely, if you take the geodesic ball of radius r at a point p um, and view it as a function of r, and then uh, you know you can consider its Taylor expansion uh, in in terms of r. So the first term, uh, the leading term, is always the Euclidean uh, volume. So this the is the volume of the Euclidean ball of radius r, and then the next non-trivial term uh, in, involves the you know, up to a sign and and some constant um, the scalar curvature at the point p. So in particular, uh, scalar curvature positive at a point uh, means that small geodesic balls have uh, a smaller, uh, smaller volume compared to the Euclidean ball of same radius. Okay, so uh, this is a very nice interpretation of scalar curvature. The, the only drawback of this interpretation is that it only really holds at the level of Taylor expansion. So for instance, there's no, um, you know, um, if, you want to, uh, if you want to measure scalar curvature by comparing the volume of, of a geodesic ball, there's really no way to um, to make it, you know, to make the comparison hold up to a definite radius, right? definite positive radius. So this is one reason, at least according to Gormov, that makes the st study of scalar curvature uh, quite challenging. Okay, um, so a classical topic, in, a classical theorem in the study of scalar curvature is this uh, custom Warner theorem. So um, at around the year 1975, Custom Warner wrote, uh, I think, three at least three papers on, uh, on the on the same essentially the same question, namely, what functions can be realized as the scalar curvature function um, on a smooth Riemannian manifold, um, and, the, and it turns out uh, specifically uh, as a corollary of their of their many results that if you have a smooth function which is negative somewhere, you know, on on the smooth manifold. Then this function can be realized as the scalar curvature function of some Riemannian metric. Okay, you don't you don't know much about this Riemannian metric, but you do know that such a function you know can appear as a scalar curvature function. So, um, in other words, the, the 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 fact that you can prescribe scalar curvature to be negative somewhere is non-abstracted at all. So there's no you know topological abstraction uh, at all on on the existence of a uh, you know somewhere negative scalar curvature. On the other hand, uh, if you want to uh, pose the scalar curvature to be, let's say, everywhere non-negative or even everywhere positive, then there are no topological um, obstructions. Namely, not all smooth manifold would have a metric of non-negative or positive scalar curvature. Okay, and the first such uh, obstruction is, is the vanishing of the a-hat genus. So this is a certain characteristic number. Um, depending on the differential structure. Okay, so um, a a uh, the historically a, a very cool example to keep in mind is the so-called K three surface. So these surfaces are, are real four-dimensional manifolds with uh, non-zero uh, a hat genus. So by the by the abstraction uh, result I mentioned before, 
there's no positive scalar curvature metric. And on the other hand, it does have a metric which says Ricci curvature identically zero. This is the famous Calabi-Yau theorem. And Ricci zero implies scalar curvature identically zero. Okay, so this is a manifold, uh, uh, an example of, uh, you know, um, according to custom, custom Warner, this is the, I think the second class of custom Warner manifolds, namely these manifolds um, um, admit a, a zero, everywhere zero scalar curvature metric, but no positive scalar curvature metric, okay? Okay, so uh, so the obstruction problem, let, let me uh, reformulate it here, uh, is simply asking which smooth and closed manifold admit a Riemannian metric of positive scalar curvature. So this is a, um, you know one of my favorite questions in uh, in uh, in differential geometry that uh, you know it has a long history and lots of exciting results and you know um, the the one one reason that I particularly like this question is that it brings a lot of tools. You know, different different areas in math, uh, into study. Um, so um, I, I I'm a more you know geometric analysis background guy. So so I I, I want to approach this this question from a more analytic point of view. Okay, so let's uh, nevertheless start the looking at the question in low dimensions. So uh, in dimension two, uh, the scalar curvature is just twice Gauss curvature. Okay, so then uh, in in this dimension we have a complete classification. Of which two-dimensional surfaces, let's say closed surfaces, admit um, a metric of positive scalar curvature or positive Gauss curvature uh, by the Gauss-Bonnet and uniformization theorem. Okay, so the the uh, it, it's very simple in this case, and 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 the conclusion is that a closed two-dimensional surface admit a, a PSC metric, and if and only if it is diffeomorphic to either the sphere or the uh, projective plane. Okay, so that uh, that ends the story in dimension two, and let's raise one more dimension. So in dimension three, things immediately become um, very interesting and, and very very challenging in, uh, in in a way. So by a long uh, development of um, uh, three manifold topology, including the resolution of Poincaré conjecture, we, we nowadays know that each closed orientable three manifold has a uh, unique prime decomposition. So, so in other words, it decomposes as a connected sum of uh, these uh, spherical space forms. So these, these gamma j's are finite groups acting uh, freely on S3. So you take the quotient of um, S3 by these groups. So they are they are space forms. And uh, you could also have uh, a lot of these S2 cross S1 factors, okay, Q copies of them in the connected sum. And then you you also need to uh, for general three manifold there there are also these connected sums uh, which I uh, label in red color so these are uh, k one to k m are the so called aspherical three manifolds so it is um, um, Im important to keep in mind that these components are uh, universally covered by R three okay so in particular the the universal cover is different from the universal cover of these S two cross S ones and these uh, spherical space forms okay so they are generally different components. Okay, so um, uh, this is uh, uh, so-called prime decomposition. Right? Um, okay, so um, the let, let, let me recall an important definition here. So a, a closed smooth manifold is called aspherical if its universal cover is contractible. So uh, in particular, these guys are all aspherical, right? Because they are covered by R3, okay? Um, so uh, these manifolds are, uh, are, are quite you know you 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 in low dimensions especially you you, you see them quite often for, for instance um all two dimensional surfaces of positive genus are aspherical right because um, the uni uniformization tells you they are either covered by R two or H two right and and more generally um, if you have a manifold that admits some uh, some Riemannian metric of uh, non positive sectional curvature then its universal cover is also uh, diffeomorphic to Rn, right? That's by the uh, the uh, uh, cardan hardamar theorem, right? Non-sectional curvatures uh, and simply connected implies that your your exponential map is a diffeomorphism. Okay, and and in particular, uh, their universal cover is contractible, hence hence themselves. The, the, these manifolds themselves are aspherical. Okay, so uh, these are some examples of um, uh, aspherical manifolds. Okay, what, why they are relevant for the discussion of scalar curvature? Well, this is because of the following uh, very deep and, and clean theorem by Shen Yao and independently by Gormal Lawson um, at around the same time, 1980s. So uh, their theorem says that uh, a closed orientable three manifold M, 
admits a positive scalar curvature metric if and only if there's no aspherical components in the decomposition. Okay, so, so in other words, um, nowadays we know that's equivalent to say that uh, your, your, your three manifold admitting a positive scalar curvature if and only if it's just a, a connected sum uh, of the spherical space forms and, and this has two cross S ones. So no KJ factor, this aspherical factor in the decomposition. Okay. Um, note that the, the, they proved the theorem in uh, at around 1980, so there's no Poincaré conjecture. Well, the Poincaré conjecture was open then, so, so it's a it's it's a very very powerful uh, theory. Okay. Okay. Or um, uh, equivalently, we can say that these manifolds are uh, covered, you know, up to a final cover. Uh, it's it's diffeomorphic to connect S three or connect the sums of uh, S two cross S five. Okay. Uh, and um, as a corollary, particular corollary, a closed aspherical three manifold does not admit any positive scalar curvature metric. Okay. Okay. So this pretty much concludes the discussion. You know, finishes the question on uh, in dimension three. That namely, we we have a complete uh, classification up to diffeomorphism on which three manifolds admit positive scalar curvature metric. So, um, um, any questions so far? Okay, great. So uh, let's go uh, go to higher dimensions. So in higher dimensions, there's no um, clean result as, as the Shen Yao Gormo uh, you know, um, conclusions in the, in dimension three. Uh, namely, that there's no classification of PSC manifolds in let's say dimension four or five up to diffeomorphism. them. You know, you, in, in a sense that you, you you can't write down precisely which manifolds admit positive scalar curvature metric. On the other hand, there are historically really important, uh, let's say, progress and and you know theorems um, that tells you that uh, having positive scalar curvature metric is um, has certain topological obstructions. So the first such ob obstruction is the one that I, I mentioned um, um, five minutes ago. It's the uh, it was proved by the Schneiders in uh, 1963. So you take a four uh, four K dimensional four K real dimensional spin manifold. And suppose that manifold has a positive scalar curvature metric, then the a hat genus is zero. Okay, so this is uh, achieved by uh, proved by a, a very powerful and, and uh, very nice observation by Lechnerowitz. Nowadays we call it Lechnerowitz formula. Okay, and such techniques were uh, ex greatly expanded by Hitchin um, in uh, 1974. Okay, and um, um, and then uh, Shen Yao and Gormov Lawson uh, picked up the particular question. So the n-dimensional torus is um, uh, is a um, well uh, in in, in um, if you look at Lichnerus Lichnerus theorem, the torus is an exceptional case because it's a spin, and its a hat genus is zero. Okay, so uh, you can't just apply the theorem to say whether the torus has a positive scalar curvature or not. Okay. Now the, uh, uh, the so so it, it remains open whether the torus T n admits a positive scalar curvature metric, and um, uh, was solved by Shen Yang or Mao um that actually does not. Okay, so this statement itself, the torus does not admit any positive scalar curvature metric, has has really deep consequences in uh, in differential geometry. Um, for instance. Um, let me let me uh, remark here is that the Shen Yang or Mao Lawson result also holds. For the manifold in the form Tn connected sum, uh, any closed manifold um, Mn. Okay, so um, the the for, for any M closed. So this implies the this extension to Tn connected sum Mn implies uh, by a, a so-called locum reduction. It's it's a so, certain reduction step that the positive mass theorem for syntactically flat manifolds in dimension n. Okay, so um, it, it's it's sort of saying an isolate, it's, the theorem sort of says that an isolated gravitational system o always have, um, always has non-negative mass, ADM energy, ADM mass, and, and, and equality oh, only happens I, for Minkowski space. Yes. Can I ask a question? And then here you don't have dimension restrictions? Uh, well, okay, so the, the um, uh, okay, so, when uh, the, the the original okay, so the original Shen Yao approach says that the uh, n should be less than or equal to seven, and the original Gromov Lawson approach says that uh, m should be spin. Okay, so th these are uh, some previous assumptions. And in two thousand seventeen, Shen Yao removed their dimension um, restriction up to the, you know it, it, they they extended all theorem to to all dimensions. 
So nowadays, I think we can people can claim that uh, this result hold for, holds for for any closed manifold M. Okay. Um, but um, in, in any case, um, if you have um, such a statement that uh, the torus connected sum M does not have positive scalar curvature metric, then the statement itself tells you the positive math theorem for for the asymptotically flat manifolds in dimension M. Okay, so that's always true. Okay. Um, and uh, um, let, let me let me also mention some slight extensions um, of recent developments. So uh, last year, uh, Otis Trodosh and, and 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 I proved that uh, actually the same statement. Oh, oh, sorry. Here, here we do need to assume n less than to seven. So up to dimension seven, the torus um, connected to some m does not have any complete positive scalar curvature metric. Well, here m is a zoom can be a non non compact. Okay. Um, and um, you, you, you also then it's it's natural to uh, to wonder whether this non-compact version of the uh, of the torus theorem imply a certain positive energy or positive mass theorem. Well, that's actually true, and it was done by uh, Lizard, Anger, and Yao, and um, they, they actually proved the positive mass theorem on syntactically Schwarz manifolds for arbitrary ends. So so these manifolds do not need to have uh, you know uh, it, 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 it for instance can have an Unique uh, asymptotically flat n, and uh, in in the compact, uh, and then um, you don't need to assume anything elsewhere. So it, it could it could go you know arbitrary uh, you know on, on on other ends. Okay, so th this this could be non-compact, etc. Um, et so, so in your theorem, when you say uh, positive scalar coverture, do you mean uniform positive? No, or just, uh, just positive. positive. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is um, this is um, uh, you know some discussion on the torus theory. As, as you can see, the non-existence of positive scalar curvature metric on the torus have you know does have other you know also deep and fundamental importance in in uh, for instance the uh, in mathematical general relativity. All right, and uh, let's go back to scalar curvature itself. And um, so Gormov Lawson in uh, 80s and Stowe's in uh, 92. Uh, thus gave a characterization of a simply connected manifolds of um, um, dimension at least five, and um, they, they, they wrote down which uh, of these manifolds admit a positive scalar curvature metric um, using you know, some differential topological uh, conditions. So it's either non-spin or it's spin and a certain uh, alpha invariant vanishes, I believe. Okay. And, and um, in that dimension four, Witten found another uh, very beautiful formula um, on cyber written invariants. Um, it's a it's a it's a kind of an dictionary type formula, and in particular, he proved that uh, if uh, on a, um, in dimension four, the cyber written invariants also abstract, abstract positive scalar curvature metrics. Okay, okay so uh, as you can see, there are minimal surfaces and uh, spinners and the cyber written invariants that that at least did this three important uh, uh, mathematical tools that that goes into the play. Um, a major conjecture in this field, I think, is um, is the following. Well, uh, people, some people would call it a gormov lawson conjecture, but I really never found it written down by gormov lawson On the other hand, Shen Yao does have it uh, did, did have it uh, written down in a in a paper in survey paper in 1907. So, the conjecture is that a closed spherical manifold does not admit any Riemannian metric of positive scalar curvature. Okay, so there are, as you can see, previous examples, including the torus. And, um, and and generally, uh, people conjecture that aspherical uh, manifolds should not have any positive scalar curvature metric. Okay, um, um, so let's call it conjecture A. Uh, there are some other connections with with other uh, types of questions. So so let's see one of them. So um, there is also um, I think a much more ambitious formulation of of similar phenomenon on um, on the bike or mouth and. And, and the, the formulation is a metric geometry, which, which I will describe now. So um, yeah, the paper is called Large Riemannian Manifolds, um, uh, if, you, if you're interested in uh, the, the original paper of Gormov. So uh, the statement is the, is the following. So suppose you have a closed uh, large Riemannian manifold, and, and I'll explain large a little bit later. Um, then for every um, uh, radius R positive, so, so this R here is a radius. Uh, then you have the following inequality. Um, the supreme, 
uh, of the volume of geodesic ball of radius r among all the point, you know, center points p on the manifold, um, the supreme of them is at least the Euclidean volume of radius r. Okay. We're, we're um, okay. So now let's go back to the definition. You know, some oh, examples of large Romanian manifolds and the consequence of this conjecture b. Um, so Gormov doesn't uh, himself doesn't give a precise definition of largeness. However, he does uh, um, give a few classes of uh, manifolds which he believes to be large. So uh, for, for instance, he believes that uh, large Romanian manifold should include com complete, contractible Riemannian manifolds with an isometry group acting co-compactly on M. Okay. So uh, in particular, an, an example would be the uh, universal cover of an, uh, an aspherical manifold. Closed aspherical manifold, okay, right? Because then uh, the group G is is the group of deck transformations, right? And it's acting co-compactly because N is closed, and uh, it's a uh, complete and contractible contractibility follows some asphyr uh, aspherical condition, right? Okay, and and then let's go to the conclusion. So remember, scalar curvature, uh, uh, it, you know, tells you what Taylor appears in the Taylor expansion of the volume of geodesic balls, right? So this condition. Um, on the universal cover of an aspherical manifold tells you that the um, infimum of scalar curvature um, um, at the point P should be less than or equal to zero, right? Because remember scalar curvature and the, uh, the larger scalar curvature is the smaller the, uh, uh, the geodesic ball will be, right? So by just looking at very, you know, uh, you know uh, radius R that, that are close to zero and using compactness, uh, this, this, uh, the conclusion tells you the infimum of, of scalar curvature is non-positive. Okay, so so in this way we see that this uh, metric geometry formulation, this conjecture B, is uh, is actually a, a stronger uh, or much stronger uh, conjecture than than the scalar curvature conjecture A. Okay. Okay, there's a um, some other connections with uh, with uh, you know metric. Geometries or topological properties of a of a manifold, we, which I I I myself do do not uh, understand a lot. Uh, I believe uh, here here we have met many experts, so um, uh, you know correct me if I state anything wrong. Um, um, I find that in a in a paper uh, written by Rosenberg in uh, in, uh, in 1983 um, um, that if a form of uh, steel Still open, strong Novikov conjecture holds. Then the aspherical conjecture, the conjecture A, holds. Okay, so this I think it's a, I believe it's a connection between this differential geometry conjecture with this uh, uh, Novikov conjecture, which uh, apparently is still open, uh, largely open. And um, there's also in metric geometry, Gormov also pointed out that uh, there are connections between this uh, aspherical conjecture, the conjecture A. And other metric properties of, of Romani manifolds. Okay, so uh, with, with let's say uniformly bounded uh, scalar curvature, um, including uh, notions uh, as the width and width, the the waist and filling radius, etc. So I, I'll just give you one example of uh, of a formulation of uh, of these uh, questions. Let's call it conjecture C. So this conjecture, I think, it's also really ambitious. It's 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 very strong, and and the conjecture says the following. So you take a manifold with, which is complete and have a uh, scalar curvature bounded below by one. Okay, uh, think about, for instance, the again, uh, think about the universal cover of um, uh, of a positive uh, of a closed manifold with positive scalar curvature. Then, um, then the claim is that there there should be a constant universal a dimensional constant C n and some um, n minus two dimensional simplicial complex. Okay, and 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 also a continuous map from the manifold to the simplicial complex. Such that for any p on the simplicial complex, the diameter, well, the diameter of any con connected component, so any com component um, of the pre-image is uniformly bounded by C n. So, so in other words, um, this conjecture is saying metrically, the uh, a manifold with scalar curvature bounded below by one should look like a you know a minus two dimensional simplicial complex. Okay, so um, this is precisely the, the definition of Euris and width, if you like. Um, so for instance, uh, in dimension three, it's saying that a three-dimensional manifold with scalar curvature bounded by one should look like a one-dimensional uh, simpl simplicial complex, which is uh, just a graph. Okay, so it should magically look like a graph. 
Okay, so uh, as we will see, all these conjectures are sort of uh, sort of connected and uh, to each other. And uh, let me uh, mention some pro previous progress. And um, this list is by no means um, uh, exhaustive. And, and I, 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 you know, that, that there, there are lots of lots of lots of interesting works. But just to show you a, a, a bit of you know important works for from each direction. So uh, when dimension is four in the in the original Shenyao survey paper. Um, they also proposed a, an interesting outline of the conjecture, which turns out to be true, actually. So, um, um, but, but, but they, they didn't include any, um, any actual proofs, any, any details, but, um, but, but nevertheless, the, this outline is extremely important um, for, for, for my collaborator and, and, and myself. Okay, and um, in uh, 192, Green and Peterson proved a very un local and very coarse version of conjecture B. So remember, conjecture B is about the volume, supremo volume um, of the GDC, volume of geodesic bows. And then um, uh, Guo Liangyu uh, here uh, proved that um, uh, conjecture A holds if the universal cover has um, um, sub exponential volume growth. Um, again, correct me if I'm stating something incorrectly. And um, and Dranishnikov, I believe, uh, uh, I think we can be uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Guoliang's uh, uh, conditions on, on on the universal cover were the fundamental group a little bit, I think. So I believe both both these two results are uh, based on the, uh, the the its connection with the uh, Novikov conjecture. Okay, and then um, in uh, in uh, two thousand eleven, Larry Guth. Um, prove a coarse version of conjecture B. So, um, so instead of showing that the suprema volume of geodesic bows is bounded below by the Euclidean volume, he shows that there is a dimensional constant. Up to a dimensional constant, this is true. Okay, so this delta n might be smaller than one, but you know, still, it's, it's a very, very interesting result. It, so, with with this weak weak constant, we can't de deduce anything interesting for the scalar curvature, but, but still, it, it's a, it's a very non-trivial result. And then um, Jian Wang in his uh, PhD thesis recently proved that the spherical conjecture in dimension four holds for uh, four manifolds, spherical four manifolds with positive first betting number. Okay. Um, this is also a, a quite interesting result in uh, using minimal surfaces. And, but, but just to keep in mind that, that there are, you know, I think infinitely many different, um, uh, different spherical four manifolds with zero bet, first betting number. So, so there are uh, open cases uh, left by the Jian Wang's PhD thesis. And then uh, I think uh, at the end of last year or we're, we're January of this year, uh, Lukomovich and Maximo proved the conjecture C holds in dimension three. So uh, they, they can construct for any three-dimensional manifold a, a map to a one-dimensional complex. And actually they, they, they just mapped to the uh, real line R such that the pre-image has a diameter, has small diameters. So these are some uh, landmarks of um, previous re uh, previous results. Um, let, let me mention. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, yes, about the last point. It, I mean, wasn't conjecture C? Sorry, conjecture C is about this. Uh, you were saying with. Yeah, you can. Yeah, was in dimension three. I mean, isn't uh, some previous work of Gromov? It's, this is already known. Uh, Gromov allows some proof. Well, uh, proof that for simply connected three manifolds. Uh -huh. Or, or ah, three see. manifolds with the, with the zero uh, B one, so to say, vanishing vanishing first homology. Um, if you read their old paper, I think their argument has um, has a gap that, that that doesn't work if the manifold is not simply connected. I see. Yes. Yeah. Um, so th their their argument is actually quite involved. They 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 need to use um, uh, I think Mimex construction by Marcus Nevis and mean curvature flow together to to give you this map. To, to the real line. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, th thanks for pointing out. Um, so the first theorem that I, I want to uh, uh, tell you here is uh, is the one that I proved with uh, Otis last year, Otis Shoulders last year. So we, we showed conjecture A in dimensions four and five. And uh, uh, and uh, moreover, we showed that a closed spherical manifold of in, in dimension in four and four and five with a non-negative scalar curvature metric. Um, then, then uh, suppose it has a non-negative scalar curvature metric. Then that metric has to be flat. Okay, so, uh, so that's the uh, uh, theorem. And uh, let me remark that Gromov independently proved the result in five dimensions. 
And uh, let me also remark that there's some more general mapping version of the theorem. So remember uh, I, I, uh, that I mentioned that, that you know, the torus Tn itself does not have PLC metric. And also Tn connected sum with any, any closed manifold N has no PLC metric. Okay, so in general, uh, we, what we know now is that, uh, which I'll mention in a minute, is that um, uh, any manifold admitting, let's say a closed four and five dimensional manifold admitting a non-zero degree map onto an aspherical manifold has no positive scalar curvature metric. Okay, so this is the first uh, theorem. And uh, the second theorem is an, an extension of the first one. So, so uh, later I'll, 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 I'll simply try to tell you how to prove the second theorem. So this is uh, in, uh, in a joint work with uh, Otis Trodos and Yevgeny Lyukomovich. So uh, remember an aspherical manifold, um, the aspherical condition is that all higher homotopy groups vanish, right? Because, uh, the, because of the uh, contractibility condition. So now, instead of assuming all the higher homotopy group vanishes, uh, let's assume that in dimension four, the second homotopy group vanish, or in dimension five, the second and third homotopy group vanish, okay? Um, then um, um, if this manifold uh, with this vanishing higher homotopy um, has a positive scalar curvature metric, then a final cover of it has to be homotopy equivalent to the sphere or the connected sum of uh, Sn minus one cross S one. Okay, so this is um, a, you can view it as an extension of this three-dimensional complete classification result by Shen Yao and uh, Gormov Lawson. Okay, let me let me give you some remarks of of um, of this uh, theorem too. Um, so first of all, um, uh, I highlighted this homotopy equivalent uh, conclusion here. Um, well, in certain cases, um, you can upgrade homotopy equivalent to homeomorphism. So, um, for instance, when n is four and in the dimension is four, and this finite cover is homotopy equivalent to the S four or S three cross S one, then people know that um, in this case, this hom hom homotopy equivalence is uh, can be upgraded to homeomorphism. And in the if in, if dimension n is five, then uh, it is known that homotopy equivalence on, on this, this type of manifolds, um, um, well, you know, automatically can be upgraded to homeomorphism. So these are, I think, really, really hard, to, to, you know, uh, results in topology. So uh, it, it's, it's nothing related to differential geometry anymore. Um, but, you know, remember in dimension three, we have the diffeomorphism condition, right? So um, you might wonder whether diffeomorphism it holds also in dimensions four and five. Well, that might be true, but uh, our approach doesn't, it is it, 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 hopeless in, in, in doing, you know, uh, different of them questions. Okay, so um, so uh, for instance, the uh, the S four case is still uh, open. It's the smooth punk ray conjecture in dimension four. Okay, so there are very delicate and hard questions. Okay, um, um, but possibly easier with a positive scalar curvature condition. Um, I, I I don't know. Okay, so. Um, this is the first remark, and the second remark is um, is that for this kind of conclusion, uh, Sn were connected sum of Sn minus one cross S one, the vanishing of higher homotopy groups are necessary because um, you know scalar curvature uh, of um, let's say the product of the torus and and, and the sphere uh, with complement dimension is positive. Okay. And, um, and these guys, of course, are having non-zero uh, homo homotopy groups, but, but it's, it's of course not not um, not sphere or, or connected sum of S n cross uh, minus one cross S one. Okay. Um, okay. So in the sense that uh, our, our theorem is still the hand can still just handle the easy case um, um, of the classification problem. Namely, uh, I, I still don't know what will happen if uh, if a pi two of a four manifold is non-zero. Uh, what can you say? Well, you do have such examples, and you have lots of other examples, like you know, take the product of any surface with with us as two. Those manifolds have positive scalar curvature metric. Um, I don't know how to classify them. Okay, and and the third point is that um, it's also uh, related to the uh, previously uh, mentioned the Urson width conjecture. So um, if you look at the Urson width of S four, for instance, then um, that 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 manifold has Urson width, um, Urson dimension. You can imagine the Urson dimension is zero or one. Okay, around S four can be mapped to a single. You know, you, you map every point to a to a single point, right? And the scalar curvature condition will tell you that the pre-image. That the S S4 itself cannot be cannot be too large. 
and these connected sums are, uh, you know, maybe let me draw a picture. So you have a connected sum uh, of S3 cross S1 with uh, S3 cross S1. You know, imagine doing lots of them. Then um, there's an, you know, in this picture, there's a natural map uh, from from this manifold to the real line, right? You you, you certain you, you you know just just project that onto onto the real line on, on the picture. Then you see the um, uh, the point is that each of these connected component would have small diameter. Therefore, uh, the the this manifold actually has um, has all um, uh, some small Urison one width. Okay. So in, in a certain sense, requiring the vanishing of higher homotopy groups will tell you the that the Urison dimension uh, is lower. Uh, okay. So um, um, that's why we need to assume that pi two is, is another reason or another viewpoint that we need to assume pi two vanishes. Because remember, Gromov's original conjecture in, in, uh, in, in conjecture C states that the Urison dimension should be two instead of one. Okay, so um, the generally you, you can map a four manifold PSC four manifold to a two dimensional simplex. And in these cases, uh, this manifold actually has Urison one dimension. So you can even map it to a, to a real line. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, um, Hi, so, I have a yes. question. I think in this case, you should talk about a microscopy dimension because the Urison dimension in this case is equal to the Nabega dimension. They are actually right. the dimension of the manifold. Right, right. Okay, okay. Let, let, let me let me maybe be more precise. I I don't think in in this case you maybe that that's a microscopic dimension. Yes. So in, in this case, I think what we can show is that uh, I, I will say in a minute that this manifold does admit a um, distance bound, you know um, you, you know a, a map into into a one dimensional simplex whose uh, pre images have uh, which small pre images small diameter pre images. Okay, but. In, in reality, you should expect the mapping to be a the target to be a two-dimensional syntax instead of one dimension. Okay. So that, that might be the definition of microscopic dimension. Yes. All right. So this is the second theorem. Um, and um, um, there's also a, I think, a very curious connection to another related curvature condition called positive isotropic curvature. And there's also uh, in, in in the study of this curvature, there's um, uh, also a, a kind of famous conjecture by Gormov and by uh, Rick Shine, which says that um, a closed manifold with positive isotropic curvature has virtually free first fundamental group, uh, the fundamental group, and in fact, the final cover is uh, diffeomorphic to connected sums of S n and S n minus one cross S one. Okay. Um, now, um, so the first uh, thing to keep in mind is that the positive isotropic curvature condition imply positive scalar curvature condition. All right. So you compare this conjecture to the to the theorem um, we proved. Um, let's for now for a minute ignore the homotopy equivalence and versus diffeomorphism. Then uh, the only missing part is whether you have the vanishing of pi two or pi three in dimensions four and five, right? So, so because again, the positive isotropic curvature implies positive scalar curvature. So, uh, uh, Chow, can you, can you remind us what is uh, positive isotropic curvature? Yeah. So basically, you need to complexify the uh, Riemann curvature um, to make it a complex valued uh, function, uh, well, form. Okay. Um, then, um, sorry, complex uh, complex valued tensor. And then the positive isotropic curvature means that that tensor is non-negative, uh, takes real value, and is non-negative on all isotropic two planes. So this is a condition uh, that was, uh, I think, first studied by uh, Mikolov. Um, uh, for instance, um, he 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 defined this curvature notion uh, such that it it is implied by quarter pinch sectional curvature condition. For instance, okay. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, some somehow you, you would argue you you could argue that it's uh, uh, not as natural as for instance Ricci or scalar curvature but still it, it's it's a it played a, a important role in the sphere uh, sphere theory. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, um, so classical approaches towards this kind of curvature condition include, uh, for instance, minimal surfaces. Uh, Mikolov, Moore, and, uh, and Lionel Fraser, etc., prove that the so, sorry, uh, the pi two all the way to pi of n choose to and uh, n, n over two um, should be zero. Okay, it's it's you know uh, again you see this is kind of uh, related to the, this condition we're looking for, right? 
Um, now, um, you know, re more recently, um, um, people use Rishi flow to study the, these kind of curvature conditions um, started uh, by Brenda O'Shane in the solution of the sphere, you know, uh, quarter pinch um, a sphere a theorem. And Zivan Brando itself, and uh, Chen Tang Zhu, and, and Huang, uh, etc. So, so I think the uh, uh, the current currently we know that this conjecture holds in dimension three, uh, sorry, in dimension four, and uh, and also in dimension at least twelve. So this uh, and there are some very curious uh, developments, and you know, very interesting developments in, in this curvature condition as well. Okay. Um, and finally, let's just keep in mind that the positive uh, peak condition implies PSE condition. Okay, so um, this is a little bit digress of the um, uh, main from the main topic. Okay. So let's go back to scalar curvature again. Uh, like I said, there's some more general mapping version of the uh, of the main theorems. So uh, the the statement is the following. So uh, again, we can only work in dimension four and five. So suppose uh, you have a Riemannian manifold in this dimension. With positive scalar curvature, and you have another manifold closed down and orientable together with a non-zero degree map from X to M. So then the the conclusion is the following. So if you suppose your target manifold N has the vanishing pi two or vanishing pi two and pi three, uh, and the scalar curvature of X of 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 your domain of the mapping is non-negative, let's say positive. Then what you can say is that the target manifold has to be homotopy equivalent to Sn or Sn minus one cross S1. Okay, so why this is useful? Well, uh, for instance, this theorem tells you that a, um, a closed orientable uh, manifold admits a non-zero degree one map to a closed um, aspherical manifold does not have any positive scalar curvature metric. Okay, because the aspherical manifold now appears as the as the end in the uh, in the theorem. And, and of course, it doesn't, it's not homotopy equivalent to any of those. All right, so um, uh, let me um, perhaps um, um, in, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so um, quickly go through some of the geometric ideas that goes, goes into the, uh, the proof. Um, again, I, I'm tr I will try to uh, avoid any analysis here. So the basic lemma starting point of the statement is the following. So the statement is long, so, so in, instead I will draw you a picture. So um, let's take, um, uh, let's say a Riemannian manifold um, um, satisfying some conditions on the homotopy group. Then what you can do is that you can always go to its universal cover and find uh, the following pair of uh, geometric objects. First of all, you can always find a geodesic line sigma. Um, so this uh, um, um, uh, the, the condition to find the geodesic line uh, is that the pi one of n is infinite. Okay, so um, as long as uh, your universal cover is non-compact and complete, you can always find the geodesic line. And then you can also find the following object, namely um, for, you know, you can, for any large distance L, you can find an uh, a minus one dimensional, um, well, let, let's say, um, let's say a minus one dimensional hypersurface. Um, such that, uh, first of all, the, the uh, intersection number, the algebraic intersection between, between sigma and, um, and these hypersurface is non-zero, like in the picture I'm showing, showing you in exactly one intersection point. And a second, um, more importantly, the distance from the, um, from the boundary to the geodesic line is arbitrarily large, okay? Let's say bigger than, bigger than three L for, for any chosen L. Okay, so um, um, the, 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 the picture you really should keep in mind is, is that uh, the universal cover, if the universal cover looks like Rn, then uh, you're taking the xn axis, and then the uh, large disk on the x1 to xn minus one plane. Okay, so this is the pair of geometric object. In general, you can find it if you know the pi one of the original manifold is infinite and um, pi m, um, so sorry, h m minus one of the universal cover is zero. Okay, you can always find such a such a pair. Okay, so why this is useful? Well, um, um, there is a key step in a, uh, which I call the homological filling estimate. Um, um, so I, I'll show you what uh, what it is. Um, the this is a theorem classical observation by Shen Yao. They um, they showed the following. Um, very nice results. So if you take a two-dimensional surface, 
satisfying that the first eigenvalue of minus Laplacian plus Gauss curvature is larger than some positive constant, let's say kappa over two. Okay, then uh, you have a conclusion. So if the surface is, has no boundary, then its diameter is bounded off by two pi over uh, square root of kappa. Okay, so the diameter is uniformly bounded. Now, if the surface has boundary, then uh, the, the intrinsic distance from any point P to the boundary is uh, bounded above by the same constant. Okay, so um, this is really an extension of the classical bonnet meyer theorem. Right, so bonnet meyer says that um, uh, the same conclusion holds if you assume the Gauss curvature itself is bounded by uh, kappa over two. So Shen Yao's observation is that you can replace this curvature bound, lower bound condition by this uh, spectral condition such that the same conclusion holds, okay? So why this is important? Well, let's go back to our previous picture. So um, now in the three manifold, um, you can, if suppose suppose you have a no homologous curve um, in a three manifold and it's called gamma, then uh, since it's no homologous, it bounds a certain two dimensional surface. Now, um, among all the surfaces, you can find uh, at least area as uh, minimal surface, okay? So this is, uh, you can always find the least area minimal surface by using a, 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 you know, a two century metric matter theory. Now the two surface is a nice smooth surface. And since it's least area, it satisfies the uh, stability inequality of the second variation of area. But that inequality, so uh, stability of minimal surface tells you that uh, for any function, compactly supported function f, um, the following holds. Okay, so now uh, in, this, in, in this equation, you see that the scalar curvature, if the ambient scalar curvature is bounded below by one, um, then this tells you that for any compactly supported function, you have uh, the following um, consequence. Now, going, going to the Rayleigh quotient um, characterization of the eigenvalue, this is exactly telling, telling you that the lambda one of this operator is not, it's bigger than let's say uh, one on, on, the, on this minimal surface, okay? So in other words, this is um, Shen, Shen Yao's um, observation tells you that um, by finding the minimal error minimizing surface sigma in this no homologous, homologous curve, you have the following fact. So take any point um, on surface sigma, the intrinsic distance on sigma to the curve gamma, uh, this distance has to be less than two pi. Okay, so this is uh, um, uh, what we, I would call a homological feeling estimate, namely the ambient scalar curvature lower bounds tells you that any no homologous curve bound a two cycle, sorry, so, sorry, bound a two dimensional chain in this two pi neighborhood. Okay. Um, okay, so, um, so why this is important? Now let's go back to the uh, three-dimensional aspherical theorem and, and I'll show you how to quickly prove it. So um, remember, we have the following pair of geometric objects in the universal cover. So this is the universal cover of a three-dimensional aspherical manifold. You have a, a geodesic line. And remember, you can also always choose a, another, um, another um, no homologous, homologous curve such that the distance between sigma and gamma is arbitrarily uh, large, let's say it's larger than uh, six pi. Okay, uh, and and moreover, sigma and gamma links, right? Uh, it, the, any any spanning surface of gamma has non-zero algebraic intersection with sigma, but this contradicts the uh, Shen Yao's uh, estimate because once you span um, uh, gamma by the area minimizing surface, you know that this surface sigma uh, lives inside the two pi tubular neighborhood of gamma. So by comparing distance, straightforward consequence tells you that um, gamma does not intersect sig sigma, sorry, sig the, the surface sigma does not intersect the geodesic line, right? But, that, but, but that's a contradiction right? um, to the non-zero algebraic intersection number construction. Okay, so, um, so this is a, a, a very nice uh, proof. And, and in fact, um, let's see, uh, Okay, and, and in fact, uh, this is exactly how we prove the theorem in dimension, uh, dimensions four and five. 
So the key estimate is, is the following uh, theorem, uh, which I would call the homological filling estimate in dimension four and five. So it's, it's exactly saying the, the extension of the, uh, of the original Shenyang's estimate. So remember, we're dealing with a manifold which is either aspherical or in theorem two, it satisfies the vanishing of higher homotopy groups. So in particular, in, in once you go to the, the universal cover by uh, Hurius uh, homomorphism, you know the universal cover satisfies uh, that it's H1, um, um, H2, et cetera, all the way to Hn minus two are all, are all uh, trivial. So the con uh, consequence of a positive scalar curvature and the triviality of the uh, these homology groups is the following. So you can always take the same picture. Um, imagine you have a geodesic line and a minus, a minus two cycle. So it says that for any um, uh, no homologous uh, n minus two cycle, sigma n minus two, um, you can always span um, some hyper, you know, some n minus one dimensional uh, chain as it's um, such that it, it, it is the boundary of that chain. Um, and moreover, this n minus one dimensional chain uh, lives inside a certain tubular neighborhood of um, um, of the n minus one, n minus two chain, and where L does not depend on the choice of this uh, sigma n minus two. Okay, it only depends on dimension and the scalar curvature lower bound. Yes. So, so Charles, this, this is under the assumption that you have positive scalar curvature. Yes, yes. This is um, positive. So positive scalar curvature plus the vanishing of all the uh, yeah, okay. yeah. homology groups, all, uh, all the way up to H1 minus two tells you this homological feeling bound. Okay, so this is where all the hard analysis um, comes into play. You know, uh, we, we need to really exploit, exploit a, a lot of ideas from minimal surfaces and, and, and related area. Okay, um, now suppose you, you do have such a theorem, then, uh, then um, the aspherical conjecture in these dimensions uh, are proved, right? You, you exactly use the same picture, uh, namely find the geodesic line and then find a, a you know far away an, a minus two cycle uh, how, such that it's farther further than this L away right then then you you achieve a, con a contradiction okay so um, so now um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll not, not try to explain how we how we prove it at, at this moment but but rather let's go back to the um, Go back to the uh, proof of uh, theorem two, and, and let me maybe show you a little bit of how do we relate this homological filling estimate with the uh, so-called Euriston width. So uh, we can prove the following fact. So uh, um, suppose that you, your manifold n satisfy the property that any uh, n minus two dimensional cycle in the universal cover can be filled in its L tubular neighborhood. Namely, it can be realized the boundary of a, of a minus one chain uh, in this L tubular neighborhood. Then uh, we know the following property of the um, of the universal cover. So you can take any base point P inside the universal cover, and then um, look at a um, level set of the distance function to P. Okay. So then uh, this level set, um, then then each connected component of the level set has diameter bounded above by twenty L. Okay. So from this you find a map from the uh, from the universal cover to the real line by simply uh, taking taking a point Q to the distance um, from it from uh, to P. So this is a, a mapping from from the universal cover to a one dimensional simplex, exactly satisfying that the uh, pre diameter of any component of the pre image is bounded above by twenty L. Right. So this tells you that the Euriston one width of universal cover is bounded by twenty L. Okay. Okay, so um, why this is important? Well, this immediately tells you that um, um, the the um, the the um, fundamental group pi one n has only cannot have only one n. So uh, the observation here is that remember we have um, um, so so um, okay so um, uh, okay so if you're not familiar with the the, the one n ended property. So it, it's, it's essentially saying that the, the universal cover n cannot have one end, and tilt cannot have one end. Right, so but because, well, essentially that's because, um, you know, you take the level set of a, um, sorry, you take a level, a level set of the uh, distance function p, then um, 
you know, you have this judicial line. So, um, so having one end tells you that everything on this level set belongs to a single component if the manifold has one, only one end, okay, for sufficiently large uh, distance. But you see, this means that um, these two points, A and B, are in the same connected component of the uh, level set of this distance function. But you're on a geodesic line, um, which means A and B are, are exactly, you know, uh, uh, the, the minimizing geodesic between A and B is this, is this portion of the geodesic, okay? Which is um, arbitrarily large as you uh, um, uh, uh, as large as you can be. So eventually, it will fail the condition we proved that any connected component has diameter bound by you know twenty L. Okay, so so um, you can do the same trick for any subgroup of G uh, subgroup G of pi one n, and the conclusion is that any subgroup cannot have only one n. Okay, so this step is actually inspired by a previous work by of Ramachandra and Wolfson. So using these, um, um, we, uh, we, we, uh, we researched a little bit on, on geometric group theory. And actually, um, if any subgroup G of a finitely represented group has only, cannot have only one end, then uh, by classical works of uh, Sarah Stalling and Dunwoody, this means pi one end is virtually free. So in other words, it contains a, a finite index subgroup, subgroup, which is also a free group. And then um, uh, we, and then uh, lucky for us, these kind of uh, manifolds were previously previously studied by uh, Gatgeo and Sassari. So um, they proved that if um, your fundamental group has, um, um, you know, um, let's take this final cover, right? It's a fine a free group of with, with k generators, and together with the vanishing of certain higher homotopy groups, then this manifold is homotopy equivalent to the connected sums of, um, you know, S n minus one cross S one. Okay, so this finishes the uh, proof of theorem two and, uh, and, and let, let me stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions, comments for Pucho? Um, so, yeah, so I have a question. How was like positive scalar curvature uh, used in proving this feeling is out? It's um, a sort of a dimension descent argument. Um, so in dimension three, positive scalar curvature is used in the second variation of uh, min minimal surfaces. Uh, let me find, yeah, it's, it's used here, right? Uh, the ambient scalar curvature appears in as one term in the in the var second variation. So if you if you know a lower bound on scalar curvature, then then you know this exactly this spectral condition. Um, in higher dimensions, we, you sort of do the same thing, except that uh, now uh, you don't have Gauss curvature anymore uh, for a hypersurface. Right, the hypersurface in a, let's say in a four manifold is of dimension three. So uh, we, we we need to do, we need to do more things and. Uh, um, so you know, it's it, 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 it's kind of a it's kind of a Shen Yao's uh, dimension descent argument. You know, finding hypersurfaces of hypersurfaces and slicing it all the way to dimension two. Okay. Um, some uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, somehow I see on the Novikov side. You know, if you assume certain version of Novikov conjecture, you can also use to prove something like that. But I, I, I don't know how the two are kind of connected. I mean, I because I uh -huh. don't really, <laughs> I don't have a good picture of uh, your argument. Uh, I mean, with this uh, inequality. Oh, okay. which, that, that's which, interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I, I don't know much about Novikov conjecture, but you know, maybe we should discuss. <laughs> yeah. So there is something like there, there must be some connection here. Right, uh, right, right. Yeah. Well, uh, are there any any questions, other questions or comments for Chao? Well, thank you very much for this fascinating talk. And uh, yeah, thanks for the invitation. Yeah, again. Okay.